If I ask you, don't think of an elephant, what will you think about? An elephant. This is how the American linguist George Lakoff begins his classes at the university. He knows perfectly that it is impossible to fulfill his request. Uh, if we ask someone not to think of an elephant, that person will think of an elephant. Yet, exactly this is the goal of this activity, to highlight for students in the most efficient, most straightforward way how framing works. Framing is an extremely important phenomenon and it is crucial for every journalist to be aware of it. There are various uh, conceptualizations of framing. According to Lakoff, frames are mental structures that can be activated by words. Framing is powerful. Even if we are asked not to think of an elephant, just because we hear the word elephant, we will think of the animal, uh, its character traits like huge, or trunk, uh, or things that can be associated with it, zoo or circus. This is largely an automatic process. In other words, it is very difficult, if not impossible, to resist frames. To highlight the power of framing, Lakoff refers to the case of Richard Nixon, who, in the midst of the Watergate scandal, when the society's trust in him has uh, significantly eroded, Whether gave a speech and said, I'm not a crook. Not a and crook. this I is what Lakoff argues, anything. because of this, people started to think of him as a crook. Why? Because this term, crook, activated the frames of fraudulence, dishonesty, criminality, corruption in people's minds. As frames can automatically shape human thinking, politicians, communication experts, the mass media can influence us effectively through frames without most of us being aware of it. It is important for media workers to realize that everyone evokes frames. If they are conscious of this, they will be able to identify and decode those frames that they come across in the discourses they face during their work. With this background, media workers can, for example, decide whether they want to adopt a certain expression or not. Imagine, for example, that a tax regulation is presented to a population by a government as a prosperity package. Regardless of the actual measure and its context, this term will activate quite pleasant frames in people's minds, including the frames of relief, well-deserved support, efficiency and fairness. Often, by being unaware of the power of framing, journalists take over terms and expressions that were strategically invented by political parties and governments. In such cases, journalists may involuntarily, or often despite their best intentions, popularize a political party's or government's agenda. On some occasions, political actors may also reframe certain expressions. This is possible because words do not have a fixed meaning. With systematic efforts, negative or positive frames can be attached to any expression. The term middle class, for example, can function as a neutral term in any language. However, if a government or a party decides construct the middle class or people who belong to the middle class as enemies and they will use consistently negative terms in their context like lazy, exploitative, spoiled, the meaning of the word can dramatically change, so much so that it can transform into a widely used derogatory label. Politicians can also portray people who belong to different ethnic or religious groups as enemies and use terms in their context that evoke, activate hostile frames, terms like dangerous uh, or violent, for example. Even if this occurs, a journalist cannot avoid uh, to use terms as uh, Buddhist, Muslim, Christian or Jew, Jewish. However, a journalist can still do his or her work in a more responsible and prudent way by being able to 
understand and decode those constructions that are activated in, in the public's minds in the context of these groups. Besides the language use of others, it is also vital for media workers to pay careful attention to their own language use. For sure, this is a tall order since journalists aim to have an impact through the pieces they produce. However, it is important to stop for a second and ask ourselves a few questions. What kind of ideas can this word activate in people's minds? Is this word or frame sufficient to describe complex realities? By using this word, will I or someone else contribute to more or less knowledge? Journalists have great responsibility as the words they use activate frames in people's minds. This is the reason why it is crucial to assess all media content from the perspective of framing as well. Journalists should not accept the ready-made frames that were produced by the media or political actors. If a journalist senses that a particular word and a frame that is activated by that word is inappropriate or unethical, he or she should find alternative expressions that evoke alternative frames.